They also have a heat shield around the spacecraft, similar to that uh, shroud that perhaps did not jettison on the target vehicle. Man has just completed a final status check. We are green and go, and that information has been passed on to Tom Stafford in Germany 9. In just a minute from now, the second stage should be cutting off. Germany 9 is now 280 nautical miles downrange and approximately 80 nautical miles in altitude. Now those miles you see there on the screen are nautical miles, statute miles. It's 80 miles high now, a little over 80, almost 90 miles high. And some 215 miles Plus downrange. Five minutes. Track looks excellent. And another less than a half a minute now. Is following our plot boards here perfectly. And now about 20 seconds to second stage cutoff. Point eight. We have reached 80% of the velocity needed for orbit. Flight dynamics says the trajectory looks very good to him. This orbit that they hope to uh, five minutes and 30 seconds. be injected into is 100 by 168 miles, elliptical orbit so-called. They should have had now second stage cutoff. Let's listen. Seco, the second stage engine has cut off. And now, in another five seconds, they jettison that second stage engine, like and the spacecraft is on its own. A go for Ivar, and that is being passed on to Tom Stafford by communicator Neil Armstrong. They're now for Ivar. Stafford will burn his thrusters to correct any small in-plane and velocity discrepancies. We're showing you that second stage cutoff. We haven't had confirmation of it yet. been getting a readout on every stage and presumably second stage cutoff has taken place and second stage jettison. We did have cutoff but not jettison. But at this time, some six and a half minutes into the flight, the spacecraft is in orbit uh, if all has gone well. 100 by 168 mile orbit. Plus six minutes and 40 seconds. Reached its orbital speed of 17,500 miles an hour if all has gone well, and we assume it has. It looks good so far, but we have not had that second stage jettison announcement. If it is going well, it's now some the seven. The from our flight dynamics officer is that Tom Stafford is thrusting aboard Germany 9. GN. Obviously, things are going well. If he's, if he's thrusting to make minor corrections, uh, as would be a plan uh, to get into uh, his precise orbit, and these are very minor uh, changes at this point. The thrust shows now has been turned off. The thrust is off. Flight dynamics says he looks Jettison. real good. We are seven minutes, Jettison. 37 seconds into the flight. They should be trailing the uh, target vehicle now by about 700. Board data here. Gemini 9 should be in orbit. We do not as yet have any orbital values. As soon as we get them here, we will pass them on to you. Meantime, now... They should be about 700 miles behind the... Uh, target vehicle now. T plus 8 minutes and 15 seconds. And they are about 85 miles below it. In the separation from that second stage of the Titan booster, Stafford gives a little oh, one and a third mile an hour forward thrust and uh, help, uh, just to help pull away after the explosive bolts are blown. Plus eight minutes and 42 seconds. The spacecraft is now passing over the tracking range of the Bermuda station. Something new on this flight, too. They had windshield covers uh, for the uh, trip on, in the launch phase until they got into orbit. 
because it turned out when second stage uh, thrust, uh, second stage firing took place on previous Gemini flights of the Titan, uh, this ball of fire clouded up the windows and made uh, observation of rendezvous and docking procedure somewhat difficult. So they put uh, plastic covers over the windshields, transparent covers that uh, the astronauts were to have jettisoned. And 25 seconds into the flight, we have a preliminary estimate on that orbit now. 86 nautical miles perigee by 150 nautical miles apogee. These figures will be refined as we pass over the tracking station at Canary Islands. 86 by 150. We will now play back the tape voice communication between the flight crew and the ground controllers during the launch phase. the flare that comes at staging, our replay just a little bit ahead of the replay of the tape of the astronauts talking. The voice you hear at the Cape at launch control is that of Bill Anders, one of the third generation astronauts, who hasn't yet had an assignment for his flight into space. I don't know whether we're still hearing part of that tape or not. I suppose that tape transmission has been completed. It was a reasonably clear uh, replay of the voice of the astronauts as they took off from the Cape here some 14 minutes ago. As you see now, they're uh, approaching the coast of Africa. They're uh, less than 700 miles behind and 85 miles below the uh, target vehicle 
the first orbit uh, figures given us here indicate that they're very close to the expected orbit at 99 miles at uh, their perigee and 172 and a half miles at apogee. It was supposed to be 100 by 168. We usually get some correction of that orbit, though, as they track the vehicle uh, past these various tracking stations, and we'll know more about that later. That little bit of discrepancy would not make any uh, serious difference at all in the planned rendezvous on the third orbit. Everything looks good for the flight of Gemini 9, finally. CBS News his color coverage of Gemini 9 will continue in a moment. Crunch. Lunch. Lunch. Quench. Lunch. Quench. Bunch. Quench. Meet the great American quencher, Lipton iced tea. It has more quench because it has more brisk flavor than other iced teas. Why? The Lipton blend and the flow-through tea bag. It's like getting two bags of flavor in one. Look inside. Two bags of flavor in one. You get that clean, fresh, brisk Lipton flavor. So when you bunch, lunch, munch, crunch, quench with Lipton iced tea. It has more quench because it has more flavor than other iced teas and less than two calories per glass. More people drink it than all other teas combined. Lipton, flow through tea bags or new instant, the only instant tea with brisk Lipton flavor. Well, can we stay with it now? Back here at our CBS News Space Center at Cape Kennedy with this flight 16 minutes old and so far looking very good. There is a slight discrepancy apparently in the orbit and the flight path of the uh, Gina vehicle uh, and Chris Kraft from Houston has been giving them some update information on uh, small maneuvers which they will make to get themselves into the proper track for a third uh, rendezvous uh, Roger. with the uh, third revolution rendezvous with this target vehicle. That will come at uh, 2.05 uh, this afternoon. The actual rendezvous will come about 1.33. Docking will come. Are we trying to hear that? You're saying in address 72. That's 25714. We're in a transmission between uh, the spacecraft and Neil Armstrong, uh, who is the capsule communicator at uh, Manned Space Center in Houston for this uh, shift at the consoles at Houston. It was a beautiful liftoff from here, and at the moment, the rendezvous should come uh, at 1.33 Eastern Daylight Time, and then if they find that that uh, cone, that shroud, is not on the uh, target and has been jettisoned as planned, they will dock uh, with the target at about 2.05 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, north of Hawaii. Communication between Germany 9 crew and the launch team at the Cape. And we have a note here from our surgeon, Dr. Owen Coons, on the heart rates of the pilots during the launch phase. Pre-launch, our command pilot, Stafford, heart rate was 90. At liftoff, 100. During the launch phase peak, it was 140. Pilot Cernan, pre-launch, heart rate was 95. Liftoff, 105. And during the peak launch phase, 120. This is Gemini Control, 18 minutes, 16 seconds into the mission. And so the flight of Gemini 9, finally, after two disappointments, is on the way. Everything so far looks exceedingly good for uh, a completion of this mission. The big question now, what will they see when they get near that target? Will they be able to dock with it as planned? At any rate, Cernan now can look forward to that spacewalk tomorrow morning. We'll have further bulletins as uh, they are needed here on CBS News. Walter Cronkite at Cape Kennedy. The Week in Space. 
CBS News selective color coverage of the mission of Gemini 9. Next, the rendezvous in space of Gemini 9 and its target. CBS News coverage resumes at 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time.